Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It might look like we are on vacation. We are not. It kind of feels like vacation. We are back in Charleston for hospital stuff. However, Kendall has not been admitted to the hospital, so we're not like in a hospital room, but she's got scans and tests and all sorts of things this week. But we're hanging out here at this hotel uh, in between things over the next few days, so we're lucky enough to have a pool. It is about the thunder and storm. Look at this, look at the sky. How are we supposed to go swimming if the sky looks like that? So we, so we came out here, it was very hot and sunny. And then we went inside, got changed, came back out, and it's disgusting. You really think it's gonna rain? Yes. You don't wanna like swim for five more minutes before it... No, it's cold in there. Huh? Feel it yourself. Some of the testing that she has to have done uh, before we do the stem cell transplant so that they kind of have a good baseline and they know that she is healthy enough to go through the stem cell transplant and to also sort of monitor what sort of effects the last five rounds of chemo may have had on her. So these are things that they did initially to get a baseline, hearing tests, kidney function tests, uh, we did a dental exam today. We have to do a bone marrow biopsy, make sure that it's not spread to her bone marrow and see the kind of the baseline conditions of that before the stem cell transplant. We did get results from the most recent MIBG test and I will share those with you shortly. EKG tests uh, for her heart. She did a renal scan today, which is similar to an MIBG. It's a radioactive chemical that they put into her port and then it lights up her kidney and they scan it on the thing that had all the little speckly dots like the MIBG, if you remember that. And then they drew her blood every hour on the hour for three hours, and that helped them figure out uh, how it was flowing and filtering and all these kind of things that are way above my head, and I'm not gonna pretend to really fully understand it, but we got the results from that. Hey, okay, everything looks great. That's what we're doing. More tests, more scans, we're hanging out, we're having fun at the pool and trying to enjoy our time before things get crazy. Let's get a little update on Kendall. How you doing? You look amazing. How you feeling? Good. Full of energy. Smiles on your face. Look amazing. Your scar looks great. G-tube doing its thing. Just kicking butt. Oh, that's thunder. Yeah, I'm wrapped up with a handful of tests. We did hearing test, we did the EKG, and we did the echo. Now we've got a few hours uh, until we come back and meet with the surgeon. So as you guys can imagine, Brandy is on the hunt for a cute place to eat. Kendall just wants chicken wings. So we gotta find a cute place to eat chicken wings. I think we can do it. Yeah, I don't know. Wish me luck. Okay, and I have a question about the maturing neuroblastoma cells. So are those essentially like like benign cells or, or how does that like Yeah, so, so ganglio neuroblastoma cells still take up the MIBG markers that's specific for ganglio neuroblastoma. 
neuronal cells and ganglia and neuroblastoma cells. Okay. So just the MIBG uptake doesn't tell us active neuroblastoma or maturing cells. Oh, okay. That's gotcha. The PET scan helps us because if the PET scan doesn't show any activity in that area, then those cells are not actively dividing. They Got can it. be taking up the MIBG because they're that type of cell, but if they're not active, that's consistent with treatment effects, and the neuroblastoma has matured into ganglioneuroblastoma, which is not malignant. And that's, you know, before, like, you know, the most recent data that's published says the Curie score of two or less you proceed on with transplant, but they look, you know, from what Dr. Kravecka learned at the meeting, they're looking, they've looked at that group, and where the PET is negative, those kids go on to transplant and do fine. Where the PET is positive, they think those kids might benefit from a cycle of immunotherapy or two to try and get the Curie score down lower and the PET negative before mm -hmm. moving on with transplant. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. All so right. I'll call you when I know a date for the PET and we'll go from there. Okay. Basically what was happening there was that they were saying that the MIBG scan, the neuroblastoma cancer scan, is, is highlighting some in her liver and in her abdomen still. And they're saying it was at the, at the tumor bed. And I mentioned that to the surgeon because we had a, we also had a meeting with the surgeon because Kendall has to get another um, line put in her neck, similar to the port that's in her sh shoulder already. They'll put one on the other side um, for the stem cell transplant and the immunotherapy treatments and everything for the next six months or so. He was shocked to hear that there was still some lighting up in the scan as the surgeon who thought he got it all out. So I was, I was thought it was very important to mention that to him. He pulled up the scan and didn't really see anything. So the plan now is for them to go ahead and do a PET scan. And what that's going to help do is determine whether the MIBG that's showing up is being taken up into old dead tissue, leftover whatever from the tumor, or is it live active dividing cancer cells? If that's the case, we're fortunate enough to have our doctor, Dr. Kraveka, who's at the Neuroblastoma World Conference in Amsterdam. She's there right now. And she got the most recent up-to-date information and she's saying to do the PET scan. And if that's the case, we need to change the course of treatment and do two rounds of immunotherapy first and then the stem cell transplant because they want her to go into the stem cell transplant with a Curie score of zero. Right now, what they're saying is that she's got a Curie score of two because of what they're seeing highlighted in that tumor bed, which could be nothing. So she could be a zero or she could be a two. So we're gonna do the PET scan to find out for sure what's what, and then that'll help us dictate where to go from here. So anyways, that's the updates on Kendall. And once again, if you guys want to help support Kendall, you can get yourself a shirt. This is a kick-ass Kendall shirt. There's also a team Kendall shirt that some other people set up for us. The money, the proceeds from these shirts go directly to Kendall. They go to Kendall that we are putting aside for her to use later in life uh, if she needs to for whatever medical treatments she might need, if she needs additional help for something when she's 25, 30 years old. We're putting this money aside for her to use uh, for herself later on. It's not something we need. It's not something we're using to pay medical bills or anything like that. It's specifically for Kendall. So um, if you want to help support, I will leave some links down in the description below. We appreciate you guys. I love you so much. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.